Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. A few days ago, I did a video on Synology Active Backup for Business, where we could back up our Windows machines, our Mac OS, or our Linux devices, as well as servers and VMs. Well, today we're going to do Active Backup for Workspace so that we could back up our business emails. You could also do this for Office 365, but since I don't use that, we won't be doing a tutorial on it. Just a warning, I will be reading off a side screen as there's about 21 steps that we need to do in the Google Cloud platform and I can't remember it all, but I will leave a link down below so that you could read that yourself. If you'd like to support my channel, the best way to do so is to hit the subscribe button. I'm trying to get to 100,000 subscribers. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, you can visit my website at mactelecomnetworks.com and we do have affiliate links down below. First to start off, we need to get the Active Backup for Workspace package from our Synology NAS. So I'm going to go to the package center. You'd see they have Active Backup for Microsoft 365, but this is the one we want here, Active Backup for Google Workspace, and I'm going to press install. Now with it installed, we could open it up and take a look at what it is. So welcome to Active Backup for Google Workspace. To activate Active Backup for Google Workspace for complete functionality and the newest updates, your Synology account is required press activate. So I'm going to sign in with my Synology account. So now we have a task creation wizard and it's saying authorize active backup for Google workspace. We need to create a new task. So we need our domain for what we're going to be backing up. I'll be backing up MacTelecomNetworks.com, And then we need the email address and we need a service key. So the service key is what we need to make within our Google workspace. And this is the website here for the Synology knowledge base for the active backup for Google workspace. And it's preparing Google workspace for backup. So what we're going to need, we need to configure the drive SDK API. And we also need to create a service key for this to be able to work. So I'm now in Google workspace and I'm logged in as the administrator for this. The first step we need to do, we need to go over to apps and then click on overview. From overview, we need to click on Google workspace. Now under the Google workspace, we need to go to drive and docs. We need to scroll down to features and applications. And then we have to look for this drive SDK and we need to turn that on. So I'm gonna allow users to access Google drive with the drive SDK API and then we're gonna press save. Now we're on step two and we need to create a service key. This service key we could create in Google Developer Console. So I'm at the Developer Console and at the top we wanna to create a new project. So I'll click on this drop down, and then we're gonna say new project. We need to give this a project a name. I'll call it Active Backup for Workspace. And then we need to select our organization. Now with the project created, we need to go over to APIs and services, and then we need to go into library. Now in the library, we need to enable each one of these services. So I'm just gonna copy and paste them in and then enable. Now with our APIs enabled, we need to create a service account. So we'll go over here, we'll click on admin, and then we'll go to service accounts. Now at the top, we need to create a service account and then give it a name. The name I'm gonna give it is Active Backup for Google Workspace. And this will automatically create our service account ID. It is blurred out here, but then we need to press create and continue. Now under the role, we need to go for project and we need to make ourselves the owner of this project. So I'll click on the drop down menu and then select project. Once we find project, we could see that we're owner and we're gonna click on that. Now for our optional rules, we could leave this blank and then we could press done. Now that the service account is created, we need to add a key. So we're gonna click under the action and then we're gonna go over to manage keys. Now for this, we wanna add a key and we're gonna click the drop down again and we're gonna create a new key. We're going to select a JSON. You can use a P12, but this is the recommended way and we'll press create. Now we need to go over to the details tab and then we need to copy and paste this unique ID into a notepad. Now we have to move back to our Google admin console and then click on security. From security, we're going to click on access and data control, and then we're going to press on API controls. Now we need to click on manage domain wide delegations. And then here we're going to add new. We're going to want to put in our client ID, but if we look at the knowledge base for Synology, we need to also copy all these in. So all of these links, I'm just going to copy and paste right from the knowledge base into this Google Workspace panel. So under the OAuth scopes, I'm just gonna paste those in. I'm gonna enter in my client ID and then we're gonna press authorize. Now we're all done with Google Admin and Google Cloud. We need to create the backup task. So we need to put in the domain for backup. Mine's gonna be mactelecomnetworks.com. And then we need to put in the administrator of our Google Workspace. So I'm gonna put that email in and then we need to upload the service key. So that service key was what we downloaded which was that JSON file. So I'm gonna upload that and then we're gonna press next. Now that we've inputted that information, we need to create a task. So the task name, I'll just call it backup workspace. And then we need to select a backup destination. 
So I created a shared folder that says workspace backup. We have this box here, enable active backup for Google workspace portal, which I'm going to do. And then we're going to press next. The next step, it is enable auto discovery services. So we have my drive contacts, shared drive calendar, and then mail. I'm not going to save my calendar, but everything else I will. And we'll press next is for our backup and our retention policy. And this will be different for every organization. I'm just going to have mine on a scheduled backup and then we're going to set the schedule. So I'm going to run mine daily at 12 o'clock every day and press OK. And I'm going to preserve all versions, but you may want to do something different. Now our task is done. I'm going to press done. Now it's asking me if I want to run the backup now and I will. So I'll press next. This will take a little bit of time, but once it's done, I will show you that it worked. So it took about 20 minutes to back up our workspace and I have two email accounts that are going in that. So let's take a look. If we go to active backup for Google Workspace, we will notice that on Wednesday, there was a task that failed and that was for my calendar, but I wasn't having my calendars being backed up anyway. And then for today on Thursday, it went through perfectly. We could also see what services are protected. We have our drives, we have our two users, and then we have our contacts. We don't have any users under our calendar. If we go take a look under our task list, it will pretty much show us the same thing. The backup status was successful. And then we can see the drive, the shared drive, mail, contacts, and calendar. Now, how do we go about at looking at the emails that were backed up? Well, that's done in a different application. It's active backup for Google Workspace, and this is the portal. So we'll click on that to open it up and it will open up a new tab. Now you can see that the active backup for Google Workspace portal has been brought up and a lot of this is blurred out because I can't show it, but you can see right here that there's a cable installation movie. This is all under my Google Drive and then below there's this Instagram movie. So if we want to choose a different application, like going into our email, we go up to the right hand corner and then click this services icon. From the services, we have our drive, we have our mail, we have our contacts, and then we have our calendar. Under the calendar, there won't be anything because I didn't back that up. But if we click on mail, it will bring all my emails up. Again, most of this is going to be blurred, but you could see an email from Spring. You could see an email from this Jesse person, which is just for a Beacons page. And then you could see my inbox, my starred, and then my important mail. So it did back up all of my emails. So that's going to be it for this video on backing up your Google Workspace with Synology NAS. It is very easy to do. There are those 21 steps to get your service key, but it really isn't that much work. And to have your emails backed up, that is amazing. If you have any questions about this video, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.